Hi, I'm ABC reporter Helen Frost. Last year, I covered the inquest into the death of nurse Gail Woodford, whose story, Australian Story, first told three years ago. For Gail's husband, Keith, the quest to find answers has been a labour of love. And while the coroner has now delivered his findings, Keith's job isn't over. A massive search is underway tonight in remote parts of South Australia for a missing nurse who hasn't been seen in nearly two days. Police believe Gail Woodford may have been abducted from her home in a stolen ambulance. Keith Woodford has been a man on a mission, determined to make sure that nurses aren't risking their lives when they go out to work, particularly in clinics in remote Australia. Woody loved Gail and he would do anything for her when she was alive. So he's going to keep doing it for her now that she's gone. Here we are, finally in Adelaide, for the findings of the, the coroner's handing down his recommendations. I'm feeling a little bit apprehensive, but I'm sure we'll be all right tomorrow. Keith's a great guy, and I think he and his family have been very strong in um, pressing for changes. A lot of things came out that really upset us. I thought that he would probably fall to pieces. But he was determined. He wanted answers and he wanted to make things better in the future. When Gail and Keith got together, they were very young, but they were meant to be with each other. Perfect match. I was working as a butcher in Adelaide and she was working in the camera shop there and waiting for a traineeship to become a nurse. And that's what we met. She just had a smile that would melt anything. She was just, just beautiful. And we ended up getting married. We always said, the kids are growing up, we would go straight up the centre of Australia and travel down the western side working. And that's what we were doing. Gail was a hands-on nurse. And there was a, an opening in Fregon. Fregon is a remote Aboriginal community that forms a part of the APY lands in South Australia. It's situated approximately 500 kilometres south to southwest of Alice Springs. It's a little community, a population of 260, I'd say. Fregon has a big family, so everyone here is a cousin of cousins, brothers of brothers. It's a family town, I should say. Gail thought that the people there were lovely. I got the job at the school as a groundsman. Mrs Woodford was part of Fregon. I worked for Ngunnapa Health. She provided uh, care and health for Aboriginal people out here, not only Fregon, but right across the region. Ngunnapa Health Council provides all of the primary health care services across the APY lands, so it is steered by the community through their representatives. I think the uh, Health Council uh, runs a very, really high quality um, medical service with um, a lot of very dedicated staff. Ngunnapa do everything, adults and the kids, humanisation and lot of a lot of sickness, a lot of disease. You just take a couple of deep breaths for me. A remote clinic is completely different to any other clinic that you'll see. Okay, again. You have to be a bit of an adrenaline junkie and you have to be pretty resilient. Um, otherwise you just don't, you don't survive out there, you don't, you don't stay. 
Start off checking your blood pressure. On any day, you might see a pregnant mum, a sick baby, an adult with chronic disease or trauma, someone who's been involved in a fight. Strangers. Gail loved her job. There's no other way to explain it. The women absolutely loved her and they'd tell her things they wouldn't tell anyone else because they trusted her. We called her aunt, had here. Very loving, very caring, and uh, would do anything for anyone. Here, out here, on the, on the APY lands. Freegon is one of the communities that doesn't have a police presence, usually. Police resources are low, in my opinion, on the APY lands. They are overstretched in terms of being able to respond to all of the domestic violence needs. Because we were the only 24-hour response in the community, people came to us to be the mediators. It would regularly happen at Freegon that you would have to barricade in the clinic, lock the doors. A common situation would be a domestic violence situation where we're looking after the woman who'd been hit um, in the clinic and the, the man would come and be incredibly angry. I think with regard to uh, violence in communities such as Freegon, uh, it is definitely a, a grave concern, uh, not just for people who work in those communities, but certainly for residents of those communities um, that live there as well. Yeah, I, I think the, the remoteness, the um, sometimes the patchy level of services does create frustration, but you know, I think people experience violence right around Australia in different communities. After hours, one of us would be assigned to be on call for the night. And during that time, if you were needed, you'd park the ambulance outside your house, turn your front light on, and people would come to your house and ring your doorbell if they needed medical attention. We had quite a significant mesh cage, and that was an area where you could walk from your front door and you could see through to the patient and see who was there. We were always told, if you don't feel safe, don't open the cage, which is hard to do in practice. Your first instinct is to help that person. Being on call, by yourself, that is the problem. Um, that is when incidents occurred. One time, Carl was on call, and this fellow pulled up and said that he'd cut his finger and he needed a Band-Aid. And he then grabbed her by the breast and said he wanted to f her. I could tell from the way she was talking that she was very affected by this incident. So then we decided we just couldn't let this go. We had to report it and get some, you know, something done about it. After that happened to Gail, we sat down and I just said, well, you know, don't you think we should think about moving? Gail said, oh, well, I haven't finished my work yet. And I'm not letting one person push me out and till I'm ready. And in hindsight, well, I sh should have said more, but I didn't. I've got a patient I'm quite concerned about. Each time it was an incident, none of her encouraged us to contact the police. If it was bordering into sort of criminal sort of things regarding assault or harassment, those sort of issues. But I feel that the follow-up on that was really lacking. There was no change in the way we did things or nothing put in place to prevent those kind of incidents happening again when you did report them. I don't think there's ever been a security incident in which we haven't fired up. I think within the resources the organisation had, it would have always tried to do the best we could. 
Frequently at clinical meetings, we raise the issue of safety. Then there was very much this culture of this is how it is and if you don't like it, you don't work for us. Yeah. I'd completely dispute that. I mean, can you allay everybody's concerns about personal safety? No, you can't, but were they dismissed or not taken seriously? Absolutely not. Wednesday the 23rd was a normal day at work. Gail got home round about 8 o'clock and we had something to eat. She was on call. And I slept right through till 6 o'clock and I woke up and noticed that Gail wasn't there. At 9 o'clock, I rang the clinic to speak to Gail. They told me that she's not here and the ambulance is not here. And I said, well, maybe she could be out at the airstrip. I jumped in the work troopy and went out the airport and there was no ambulance. And that's when I knew that something was wrong. I knew she was in trouble. was missing, but fortunately had a GPS tracker which had tracked the ambulance to over 400 kilometres away to Cuba PD, and there was blood in the vehicle, so we were extremely concerned um, for Gail's safety at that point. It's a vast, vast expanse of land. There's a lot of scrub, um, hills, extremely difficult to search. We had trackers out, we had people looking everywhere. We had bikes out. Even people went out at night, came back late, you know, one, two, three o'clock in the morning from just out there surging, singing out. The worst fears confirmed. Detectives find the body of the missing outback nurse, Gail Woodford, in a shallow roadside grave. The police said, there's no easy way to say this, but we found Gail and she's, she's dead. When we found out she passed away, it bring a dark cloud over Fregon. Right across the land, everybody went sad and um, really heartbroken. We are having difficulty coming to terms with this unprovoked, premature end to mum's life. Our hearts are breaking every second. Oh, we know that she was on call. She was working. She was supposed to attend to emergencies. But how she ended up being outside and gone is the mystery. Police intercepted her work ambulance. Behind the wheel was a 36-year-old man. He is the man who is now charged with murdering her. Now, your full name, Dudley Davey. What we know about Dudley Davey is that he was one of these young men that witnessed a lot of domestic violence, a lot of abuse. He had a history going back almost 20 years at that stage of systematically attacking women, strangers. In 98, so 18 years earlier, when he was still a teenager, he attacked and indecently assaulted a nurse working in Fregon. He's been in jail for 14 of the past 18 years. Wasn't given any sexual offender treatment programs. He's then essentially given a bus ticket by a corrections office and sent to Marla in the far north, which is the gateway to the APY land. Dudley Davey had been living back in that community for many months before the offence occurred as a free man because he'd finished his sentence. Neither the parole board nor correctional services nor anyone in the criminal justice system at that time had any jurisdiction over him. 
At the time of his arrest, it was mentioned that he was a man from Freegon. Now, that really angered the Freegon community, who said he's not one of ours. They didn't want him there after the previous attacks. I'm investigating the disappearance of what I now believe is the suspected murder of Gail Woodford. His story was that he, he lured Gail out on the pretense that his grandmother wanted a Panadol. After he got her into the ambulance, they've driven out of Fregon onto the main road through some scrub. Then he's raped her and then murdered her. The almost universal view is this was a person who committed an evil act that you know, what what he did is unforgivable and you know, that there's no that there's no excuse for what he did. All right. Dudley Davey took some time to plead guilty, eventually pled guilty, and was given a life sentence. He has a 32-year non-parole period. It was very difficult to, to know how we felt about that, that sentence. I mean, no amount of, of time or length of sentence would, would bring Gail back. I think there are a lot of unanswered questions. I just want to know why I didn't wake up why I didn't hear anything. And I'll always think it's my fault because I didn't do anything. We were confused, we were numb. And we get this email from Safe Work SA saying that Gail was not at work when she died. If you were up there working on call, you're at work. It's not rocket science. And it, it devastated our family. Safe Work is a regulatory body in South Australia who's there to protect employers of all different workforces. Unfortunately, by the time Safe Work acknowledged that Gail was performing her employment duties at the time at which her death occurred, too much time had elapsed in terms of none of her health being obligated to speak or anything like that. It was an incredibly tough time, but the nurses had, um, they had a campaign and they had um, bandages on them and there was these, these photos from all over Australia and they were honouring our Gail and it was, it, it, it was heartwarming. Ms Woodford's death has prompted calls for better protection of health workers in outback areas. The nurse behind it says stories of abuse are unfortunately all too common. The petition was for the federal government to act and pass a law that no nurse would ever work alone again. It was um, the start of um, better working conditions and the start of improvement for the, the, the safety and welfare of nurses. I guess the key thing that's happened since the murder is we implemented a program where after hours at night time, if people want to see a nurse, then they have to see a designated community member who's employed as an escort so that a nurse never sees somebody after hours by themselves. The family and the Nurses Federation were talking to parliamentarians and wanted a law that protected nurses better in remote communities by giving um, some security to them, some additional security. Before this chamber considers this bill, I'd like to thank the Woodford family. Husband Keith, daughter Alison and son Gary uh, for their timeless efforts since their loss, uh, to have governments implement Gail's law. It helped heal some of our heart that, that people cared and they realised how good of a person she was and what she did and that they deserved better and Gail deserved better. It was an important uh, step forward when Gail's law passed the South Australian Parliament and I was proud to be a, you know, a part of the Parliament that uh, 
that turned a tragedy into something that hopefully can, uh, can make things safer in the future for others. We weren't going to let it end there. We were advised to write a letter to the coroner and request a uh, inquest into Gail's murder. We finally got a phone call from the, the coroner's office to say that in January 2020, there will be an inquest. No worries. We're just uh, happy now that we've, we've got a, a date to finally find out, hopefully to find out what exactly happened to Gail. The inquest was set up to look into the circumstances surrounding Gail's death. So what were the practices she was following as a nurse? Um, how could things be better done? It was delayed because of COVID at different intervals, which is why it went for so long. Keith attended and that would have been hard work for him because you go through it all again. You know, you have to go through everything again. The inquest into her death was told no extra security was put in place despite nurses requesting it. A lot of things come out in there that um, I didn't know. Um, one that the police years before that had warned Anna for Health that they need to do something about the security. And Nana for Health requested that the police provide it security basically that they turn up and escort the nurses and the police said that that wasn't suitable we heard that as part of the evidence from police Nanamapa health council told the inquest it couldn't afford to employ extra security staff or additional nurses we learn about the vast number of systems and government, non-government organizations that that really let Gail down and made Gail vulnerable to her attack that included South Australia Police, um, Corrections, the Parole Board, all of those systems had the opportunity to stop Dudley Davey. Senior police and corrections staff are expected to face questions over the level of policing in the APY lands. The Fregon elders were worried their community was going to get the blame for something that they hadn't done, that Dudley Davey, who was from a different town, he'd done it and they wanted to know why the authorities had allowed him to be in the APY lands in the first place. They should keep it there. That's a policeman problem. They should, shouldn't send him to um, Freegun. Not, not our problem. Our community is a really good community. And this person is, is, is no good. He's he making trouble, not from us. So we're about to go in and get the findings handed down from the coroner. It's, it's a pretty nerve-wracking feeling, isn't it? It is, yeah, it's sort of uh, apprehensive. When the coroner tabled the report, the family's lawyer went through those recommendations. So I think this is an important finding here. We could not have got a better finding from the coroner. Applying Gail's law in a much broader way so that it covers nurses who are working remotely during the day as well as at night. So we were pleased that everything that we thought came to fruition. We're feeling really positive that we feel that Gail's been exonerated of any kind of practising outside the guidelines or the policies set by Nana for Health. Um, you know, it's come through quite strongly that the coroner feels that Gail was doing her job and to the best of her ability and within all the safety practices that were in place. In his 103-page report into Mrs Woodford's death, the Deputy State Coroner recommended that a permanent police presence be considered in the remote community of Freegon. Oh, I just want to make a brief statement. The coroner says there should be two people at all times, day or night, and that no one should present to nurses' houses for medical assistance. We've only had a short time to consider the findings. Going through the coroner's findings, he quite clearly feels that Dudley Davies should never have been released, that there's multiple organisations that, that should have recommended 
that Davy was never, ever suitable for release, that the risk of the community was too great for him to be out, and in that sense that her death was preventable. The coroner found there was a missed opportunity to keep Davy in custody and has recommended a change to the law requiring SA Police, Correctional Services and the Parole Board to tell the Attorney-General when a prisoner should be considered for indefinite detention. South Australia has a provision in the Sentencing Act, which has been there for a very long time, where people who are found by the court to be incapable or unwilling uh, to control their sexual impulses can be detained indefinitely. Applications to the court, which are going to involve potentially taking someone's liberty away, we need to have a basis for doing it. It's a very difficult thing for a court to do because you're essentially locking someone up in a prison, not because they've offended, but in case they might. Joel never had a chance from day one. It's important that these recommendations are acted on so no other family have to go and to endure what we have. Yeah, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I agree uh, wholeheartedly with the coroner's recommendations. I've always been a strong supporter of having police presence in communities. For particularly violent offenders, I don't think they should be allowed um, back near vulnerable uh, communities. And it's not just for for the, the workers and the staff of those, those communities, but um, for other victims, locals, the women and the children. Yep. From a tragedy, we've seen the, um, the advocacy of Gail's family and I think some good has come of it. I think uh, there are changes that make it better and safer for people working the APY land. To look after every nurse from, from APY land and we've got all the partnership with the white men system. And we've got, to, we've got to all work together. This is the first time um, happened to, um, in our community uh, bad things so it ought to happen, you know? Gail always used to say that Woody would give the shirt off his back to anyone. And I think Woody will keep up his fight for, for nurses. He is really an amazing man. Cheers, guys. Cheers. The job's not finished. It, it's definitely not finished. What would we, as Australians, do without the nurses and the doctors and the carers? Surely they should be able to go to work and be safe. I think the main priority for the family and myself is, is to start up a campaign to make Gales Law um, Australia-wide. And we won't stop until we're done. It's Lou here. Louise was a successful tennis player already. She's an expert commentator and coach. Do we want to do a sound check of we're good? The story of Louise and Brian, it's a story of hope. You ready for a big challenge today? I met Brian three years ago. He was homeless. Yeah, great shot. Here we go. I had no one in my life that was able to help me. I've been waiting 35 years for this. That tennis family, they didn't want to know him as such. The stigma about mental illness then was 
bloody terrible. I wanted to help him. So you have to carry everything that you need all the everything. time? All with me. She's turned me around, made me a better person. Come on, last one. You pull me up this one. Sports is a way of connecting people, and you just never know where that connection will take you.